Dan, anytime you're ready, let me know. I'm ready. Okay, we've been listening to Arnett Cobb live at Shane side of the street. It's about time to break away to live to Piano Forte and station manager Dan Bendert. Good evening and welcome once again to the Piano Forte Studios in Chicago, together with partnership from the City of Chicago and the Jazz Institute of Chicago. WDCB and Steve Maxwell Vintage and Custom Drums with additional support from the Hemmins Theater in Elgin. Along with WDCB, present another of our Jazz Fest Week live broadcasts. All 100 seats are just about filled in this intimate space at Piano Forte. They were claimed about a week in advance for tonight's concert, a highly anticipated solo performance from pianist Matthew Shipp. The Piano Forte Foundation is a nonprofit whose mission is to preserve and promote piano culture, and there are some more great jazz piano events happening here this weekend. One of the last musicians to hold the piano chair in Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers, Jeffrey Kieser. He'll perform here at Piano Forte Saturday at 5, and he'll join us on WDCB for a live broadcast Saturday morning at 10 a.m. A 10 a.m. start as he'll talk to WDCB's Barry Winograd about his work and play a few tunes. That's Saturday morning at 10. Sunday at 10, Lawrence Hobgood, a solo piano performance, and we'll have that also for you on WDCB. Another big event to mark on your calendar Pianist V.J. Iyer performing two solo concerts here at Piano Forte Friday, September 5th. More info online at pianofortefoundation.org. Well, it looks like things are just about ready. We're going to take it to the stage. Let's hand it off to tonight's Master of Ceremonies, jazz writer Neil Tesser of the Jazz Institute of Chicago. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all. I am Neil Tesser, and I work on the uh, programming uh, committee for the Chicago Jazz Festival. This is the third year that we've had the chance to partner with Piano Forte in this uh, little solo piano series that precedes the actual start of the Jazz Festival, which is tomorrow afternoon at the Chicago Cultural Center and then moving to Millennium Park from the, tomorrow night through the weekend. And so we're very happy to see you all here and very happy that we'll be able to welcome Matthew Shipp to this performance. Before we begin, um, let me uh, say that uh, there's no photography of any kind during the performance. And also, um, if you have a cell phone, and of course, who doesn't, would you please make sure that the ringer is turned off? As you've noticed here in the, in the, in the facility, it's a beautiful new studio that they built for Piano Forte. Uh, one thing that they haven't really publicized is the state-of-the-art system that can detect any cell phone sound and immediately fry the electronics. Don't believe me, just try it, but I don't think you want to lose your phone that way. So please make sure that's all turned off. Uh, for the last 30 years or so, Matthew Shipp has been one of the most important and exciting young pianists on the scene. Well, at least he started as a young pianist on the scene, and for the last 30 years he's been building on that reputation. Um, he'll be performing on Friday and Saturday night as part of the house band at Constellation in their after-fest sessions. Uh, and he'll also be releasing a new solo piano album in a couple of weeks. It's called I've Been to Many Places. Please welcome Matthew Shipp.
thank you. I'd like to thank the um, Chicago Jazz Fest, Piano Forte, WDCB, and Fazioli. Don't get a chance to play them that often, and they're wonderful pianists. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I kind of do in my solo sets, um, well, my trio sets also, but is kind of mix free improv with some of my own original tunes and standards. And I kind of put them in the pot and stir them up. And sometimes I don't know what parts come out what, but um, it's a part of a stew I'm trying to cook. So that's, you know, but it's basically aspects of free improvisation with my own original compositions with standards. And I try to see where all the pieces kind of fit in a new puzzle because I, I can pull things out of one thing, put them somewhere else, and kind of come up with a Frankenstein. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Matthew Shipp. Matthew's just informed me that he'll be happy to sit here and take a few questions. So please, have a seat. Take the comfortable seat. You've been enjoying the piano of Matthew and, um, Shipp in a live uh, performance from the... We can the start with anybody in the audience, or In a live not, performance from the Piano Forte Studios in anybody? Chicago. The concert is part of the Chicago Jazz Festival's Piano Forte Sessions. WDCB's Jazz Fest Week live broadcasts are presented with support from Steve Maxwell Vintage and Custom Drums. Together with partnership from the City of Chicago and the Jazz Institute of Chicago, WDCB is offering live broadcasts throughout the week in celebration of the fest. Join um, us tomorrow well, for festive live sounds I mean, all direct that comes from down the Chicago to Cultural Center. To make a we'll have two sets from so, Preston Bradley um, Hall at 1230. So it's the Paulinho Garcia Tina Quintet. Then at 2 p.m., the duo of Judy Roberts and Greg whatever. Fishman. You hear know, it all right here you put on 90.9 FM WDC. I mean, some people are And don't forget, and there's they, more coming up this weekend really here at Piano Forte. From the live WDCB broadcast you know, they, they're Saturday kind of at 10 a.m. Set up where they, Jeffrey Keezer will be sitting down in, with our own Barry Winograd here in the Piano Forte Other studios people, a lot to talk about his music and play some piano. You can also see Keezer in a full solo performance Saturday afternoon, a non-broadcast event here at Piano Forte. That's Saturday. At profession. <laughs> On Sunday from 10 a.m. to but 11 a.m., yeah, another I mean, live WDCB most people keep busy with a solo performance from Lawrence very few people, like, have And don't forget to mark your on your calendar Friday, September 5th. Band, that's when pianist VJ Iyer will play a pair of solo too. concerts. And, and, and then seven, very few another jazz musicians at 9 have a situation like more with info a rock online at um, pianofortefoundation.org. Thanks again to Thomas Zolz, Victor Lejeune. Come hell or also, high water, Linus you know, Kruger and the entire not, crew and here at the Piano Forte Studios. Thanks also to Neil Tesser, Lauren Deutsch, and everyone at the Jazz that, Institute that of situation Chicago. Very More info about the Jazz Institute jazz. and the Chicago I mean, Jazz Festival a, a situation available like that at like jazzinchicago.org. I mean, and thanks, of course, to the folks back at the WDCB back Studios for their production um, help, including Bruce Oscar, in, in, in Clarice Morris, like Bill Tennant, Chicago, and Ken Scott. I'm Dan Bitter. Thanks for listening. Let's send it back now to the studio for Bruce Oscar and It was pretty much that bad, but that situation is very seldom happens in the type of music I do, and therefore... We're all stretched in a million ways, yes. <laughs> well, oh, wow. Well, I don't think there's such a thing <laughs> in jazz. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to work with Thirsty Year, but the, the record industry is um, in, it, it, it's in therapy right now. So. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, I, I mean, in, in one way, working with a label, it, it kind of puts, you're not really in any better shape than somebody putting out stuff on their own nowadays. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's not exactly true because there is some infrastructure there and um, there's things about the label that really help you, but, but it's just really rough, rough out here right now. Uh, just a little background. Uh, you act as a kind of curator and producer right, right. at Thirsty Year Records. That's what the right, gentleman right. was referring to. And, and not only that, but Thirsty Year was a record label that was um, a rock label before I started working with them. And then they started doing kind of progressive jazz. Yeah. A lot of interesting things. Um, any, yes, go ahead. Um, well, nothing's ever the same. I mean, even if I tried to play the same, you know, you go back another day, it's just a whole different reality. So you, you push the nose down, and it's slightly, slightly something else. But, I mean, I guess that goes for every musician, not just me. But, um, um, yeah, there's some pieces that kind of keep a similar format, especially with the trio. You know, the, 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 the less musicians are in the band, kind of the easier, the, not easier, but the more things mutate because I mean if you have three people you kind of stick at some type of a specific arrangement and of course that gets changed or you know if you're feeling really good some night the bass player might not adhere to the form and you know I look at him and then he's just off and it's like 
he's, you know, he's doing his thing and it's working, so you go with it. But, um, but like if it's a duo, it's kind of more flexible, and if it's a solo, it's extremely flexible. So I would say yes, I do have some things that kind of stick to a similar format, but um, depending on, you know, one night you go for something and it's just not there and, and something else is there. So it, it does get changed every time a little bit. Uh, hi, Marguerite, what's happening? <laughs> um, a warm space, a nice instrument, a crowd that's really attentive, and um, presenters that want you in the space. Th those things together equal a fun night. And, uh, but I've, I've worked, you know, where one of those elements might be missing, and the, the night might be interesting also for whatever reason, and, you know. It just goes with the flow. Um, I usually know that I probably will throw a standard in at some point because I get bored with my own language. So, you know, and then, um, but, I, I, you know, once somebody, I was in a festival and, and the person caught me and they were making programs up. So I, th I guess they thought it was like classical music and they said, you know, what are you going to play? We need, we're writing programs. And I, I have no idea. And I said, um, they said, well, okay, we'll call you back like the day before the performance. I have that. <laughs> and, and then it was like, well, we got to make programs. So like, how about like five or six hours? I'm like, look, you can call, ask me right before the performance. I have no idea. So, but um, but at any time, there's probably usually standards that I'm kind of fooling around with. And tenderly is on the upcoming album that Neil mentioned. Um, my funny Valentine, I've never recorded, I don't think. No, I haven't. Um, so, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I knew I was going to throw a standard in, but depending on how comfortable I am and what just feels right comparative to what happened before that in the improvisation, um, and if I feel I need, like, some type of variation this way and that just comes to mind, that, that comes out. Yes. Yeah, does that make Tony interesting in these situations? Or? Um, yes. <laughs> well, there's a, I mean, uh, first of all, I, I, the album you're probably referring to is Zoe, which was on a label called um, Rise Records, which was out of Austin, Texas. And it was a guy named Craig Kuhn ran the label. He used to work at a record store there. And he just called me up one day and he's like, I'm a big jazz fan. This might sound weird to you. I run a punk rock label, but would you be interested in recording? And I, so I just said, you know, like, you know, how, why? And he's he's like, well, you know, I'm a big jazz fan, and I I was listening to David S. Ware, you know, who I used to play with in the quartet, and he really liked my version of um, the solo I did on Yesterday's on Flight of Eyes. So he was. So I'm like, yeah, you know, why not? You know, and at the time, I I was I wasn't getting signed to any jazz labels. I mean, I, at the time I tried, I was trying to get signed by Black Saint rec Records and for some reason it just didn't happen, so um, why not? Now, that record, when it was on Rise, the logo of that label was Charles Manson's Eyes. The Eyes, so that is the only jazz record in world history with Manson's Eyes on the back of the cover. Uh, um, but I, I, you know, some funny things happen. Like I remember, um, just because of that, I, you know, I got on some interesting bills where I played, um, I remember playing in Houston, Texas on a bill with a band called Rusted Shut. And um, a woman named Sybil was the bass player. And myself and William Parker were doing a duo with um, Rusted Shut. We were opening for, uh, yeah, so a lot of situations like that happened that were kind of interesting. But it was cool because, like, the kids embraced the music for whatever reason, just because they were there and open-minded and it. That was kind of a very interesting and um, good period for them. But also, historically, that's not, that wasn't unprecedented. Um, Sun Ra, for instance, you know, even though he was doing the, the DIY, I started to say DUI. 
<laughs> the do-it-yourself aesthetic and putting his own records out on on Saturn Rec label. Um, he was on a bill like with the MC5 and and bands like that, so it wasn't that unprecedented what we were doing, but it was just at a different time and kind of took on a slightly different way of it happening. Whoa. Oh, wow. Um, I, I'm tr just trying to get through every day. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm leaving that. There's a whole generation. I'm 53. There's a whole generation of people. A lot, and a lot of them are here in Chicago, actually. I just um, actually did a recording, you know, yesterday and today with um, Mike Reed and some of his friends. And I'm letting those guys, the younger guys, determine because uh, I'm just trying to survive <laughs> and I you know I I don't know where the music's going I, I it's not up to me it's up to the younger people now and I'm just trying to um refine I don't know if refine is the right word but just trying to push my own language forward and and do that and um good luck to the younger people <laughs> that's all I got <laughs> but you know they're all really enthusiastic and energetic and doing stuff so it's but I don't know that's an interesting question I, one thing about jazz is that it's it's a music of physicalities I mean you, you know your 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 body is invested in playing the instrument and creating patterns and it's that'll never change but younger generations whole central nervous system is different because they grew up you know with laptops and iPhones and all that stuff and it's just that their whole mentality is different and they're bringing a whole different world view to the music so you know I don't know exactly where they're going to take it but they're taking it somewhere <laughs> and also it's more of a collage culture I mean from right, hip hop right. on it's a matter of taking things that exist and doing something different with them right right and well that's, that yeah. was never really the jazz aesthetic before right. I guess it's postmodern in the world yeah. work for that <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I come from a real kind of traditional, actually, jazz background where I think of it as a language and I think of myself as this person creating a language. And, you know, I know a lot of younger people don't exactly approach it that way. Um, but um, good luck to them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Do you have a favorite I try not to think. I try just to start and trust my instinct wherever it'll go. And sometimes, like, you know, I want to have a control over it. So if it sounds really good, I think it's happening. But when I listen back to tapes, sometimes when I think things aren't happening and I don't have control, that's when something. Um, so the recipe is to get started you know that's that's the recipe and I I just had to trust that something will happen um I, I you know I, I and I say all that it sounds mysterious but I, I actually do have like things I start out with just to make sure that I, I get off on a good footing because there's nothing worse than to lose your footing in front of people and just not not sure you know I mean you know you're stepping forward but you, you, you don't know if you're falling off the abyss or not. And, and maybe that's good to fall off the abyss. I mean, Derek Bailey, a great guitarist, once said his favorite music was early, the very first period of bebop. And he said, that, you know, they didn't have, they were falling off the abyss there. There, there wasn't, you know, and that's what he liked about it. So maybe that's good. I'm, I'm both a control freak and not a control freak at the same time. Um, I don't know how I balance that, but, uh, but that's my vibe. So... The recipe is to keep practicing and to have a lot of things you can rely on if 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 inspiration is not a hundred percent there, and just to trust the language. But um, do you have a recipe when you have a conversation? I mean, with somebody, if you walk in a room and you're talking out, it's different solo than with a group. But if you're I, when I'm playing solo, I guess. I'm one of the crazy people. I'm talking to myself. 
But uh, I mean, if, okay, with the trio, I'm ta- you know, you're having a conversation am- among three people. And on one level, if you're talking to your spouse or your brother and sister, I mean, you don't really need a script. I mean, you, you trust that the dialogue will take care of itself because of, of um, sh- a shared language pool and, and, and topic areas that you guys cover together. So that, that's the recipe to trust language. Anybody else? Once again, let's thank Matthew Shipp. Thank you.